Today, I'm making bread that requires no kneading. And I'll be making the same bread with two different types of flour. I will be comparing generic high protein flour with Prima bread flour that is three times the price of the generic type. I'm using the same no knead bread recipe for both doughs. It's a very simple recipe using only flour, salt, yeast, and water. Combine the flour and water to make a dough. You don't have to get it smooth, just make sure all the dry flour is incorporated into the dough. It might look a little sticky and shaggy, but that's okay. Same procedure for the Prima flour. Mix all the dry flour into the dough. Again, it won't be smooth and it won't require any kneading. Just make sure all the dry flour is incorporated into the dough. Now, I will cover the dough and label it. I usually leave it in the fridge overnight for about 15 to 18 hours. After 18 hours, the dough will look like this. They both look a little wet and sticky, but that's okay. I use parchment paper so it's easier to transfer the dough to a baking tray later. Make sure you generously flour the surface. The generic dough is wet, but it is quite easy to pour out. It's a little bit sticky, so all the flour that we put on the surface just now actually helps. Now this Prima dough is heavier than the other one. It is really stickier and more elastic. See how strong the gluten is here? Now we just need to fold this into a loaf. I'll start with top down and then left right. This dough is pretty light and fluffy. So I advise to generously flour the paper first, so it's easier to fold. so that the seams are facing the bottom. Now pat it to get it in shape.
As you can see, the prima dough feels a bit heavier. I've dusted more flour on the paper this time, so it's a little easier to fold. Look how the gluten here seems stickier than the other dough. You need more flour to handle it without sticking. The generic dough is lighter and it is easier to handle because it is less sticky. Prima dough on the other hand is very elastic, so dusting it with enough flour is very important. I put a bowl of water below the rack to generate some steam during baking. At 20 minutes, the generic loaf is already golden brown, while the prima loaf itself is still pale. By 30 minutes, the generic loaf is already done. I let the prima loaf sit in the oven for another 8 minutes for more even colouring. Look how crusty the skin is. The generic loaf has a nice even crust. The prima loaf is crusty with crispy blisters on the skin. From the outer appearance, the prima loaf is definitely a crusty bread. Now let's see the inside. Nice even air pockets for the generic loaf. And the Prima loaf? Almost the same as the generic loaf. Now let's look at elasticity. See how the generic loaf springs back very slowly? Watch again. The Prima loaf seems to spring back really fast when you do this. Generally, the Prima Loaf produces a crusty skin and a chewier texture. But the difference is not obvious when it comes to taste. Both loaves taste pretty similar.